Good day everyone, I am Dr. Osama Ibrahim from Ease and Different Radiology. Here on Ease and Different Radiology, I am talking about all things related to radiology diagnosis. So if this is something you are studying and looking to perfect, you have found the right channel. Today, I will talk about one from the most important and confusing presentation about cystic lung disease. Actually, today I will be specific for the diagnosis of cystic lung disease as a part from the COVID-19 or as a possibility of COVID-19 with the cystic lung status. And I will do this via comparing it with the CORADS classification system for suspected diagnosis of COVID-19 and also through eight cases for uh, Peter practice. So let's do it. The learning objective from these presentations is uh, diffuse interstitial lung disease as a lint, other causes of the cystic abnormality lie in each RCT, and rare cases which uh, accompany grand glass opacity and cystic ab uh, abnormality in the lung together. However, to discriminate the cystic from cavity is very important a question before starting the differential diagnosis of cystic lung disease, so I make also one slide for this discriminations and the enumerates differential diagnosis of cavities which is uh, other differential diagnosis for the cyst and uh, questionnaireing map for the proper diagnosis to reach for the proper diagnosis and the correlates according the grand glass opacity abnormality how we can classify them from one to five and let's practice with the eight cases today my presentation is going to be fast as it representing revisions and the english versions for similar arabic presentations which was done before so the cystic lung pattern is uh, classified into three groups the main group is the diseases of the lung which are causing cysts in the lung parenchyma and this can be remembered by the mnemonic word lint for the L from the lymphangiolimatosis or LAM, E from eosinophil granuloma or LCH, N from neurofibromatosis, T from tuberous sclerosis. Both the uh, neurofibromatosis and tuberous sclerosis are phacomatosis, so this, this li, the pathology can be discriminated or recognized by other findings which be find, uh, we, we be the, at the CNS or the other part from the body, as the skin and legs. Uh, the other group is the cystic lung patterns, which is called the others. The others is uh, representing three groups, honeycombing, centerubular emphysema, cystic bronchiectasis, all can cause uh, cystis in the uh, lung parenchyma, which is resembling the cystic lung disease. However, it can be discriminating, as we'll discuss later in the presentations, uh, by a specific patterns of the uh, findings in the HRCT. So it can be excluded easily. And the rare situations when we are uh, faced by cystic lung with grand glass opacity, the same in the same film, uh, uh, both are in the same film, and disease representing three most common disease which are causing disease patterns. The first one is a cometive interstitial pneumonia or DIP and disease one uh, occurring with uh, smokers and the pneumocystic uh, urovici pneumonia uh, or the uh, formerly known as uh, pneumocystic cranii pneumonia and disease occurring with the low immunity patients, psoriatic patient with cancers or uh, steroids, therapy or uh, most commonly with the HIV or uh, AIDS patient. Lymphoid interstitial pneumonia, the third pattern which is showing cyst with, with ground glass opacity and this is occurring in the, uh, mostly in the females and the cysts are countable as well as uh, the pneumonia also uh, is called the LIB or lymphoid interstitial pneumonia. It occurs also with autoimmune disease like Jogarin disease on, or like this. So, there are three groups which can appear the, when I presented with the HRCT with cystic lung patterns. I can divide them three groups according to these distributions and then excluding one by one as I will show you in the next slides to reach for the final diagnosis. First, when presented with cystis, uh, uh, the most common causes is the lint as a disease. Lint representing LAM, uh, LCH, 
NF and the TS and disease are the four red uh, diseases which can cause the cystic in the lung. The second group is the others and the others are honeycombing and honeycombing can be differentiated by the positions or distribution of the cystis at the subpleural surface and arranged in the rows with a slightly thick wall. Cystic bronchiectasis, if the cystis are communicating with the bronchial tree, I consider it as a cystic bronchiectasis. And centrolar emphysema, if the wall of the cystis are imperceptible I can or can't be seen. And also if there are central dot sign of the uh, central arterioles, also this is can uh, discriminate or recognize the diagnosis of the centrolar so the green group is called the others, the red group is called the diseases which are causing cystis in the lung and the pink one which if there are cystis with ground glass obesity, cystis with ground glass obesity are three diseases most commonly. The, the, the most common three diseases are the DIB, discomitive interstitial pneumonia, BGP or PCP and LIB, lymphoid interstitial pneumonia, pneumocystic cranial pneumonia or urovitsi pneumonia. And this is a pattern of the cystis which appeared in the lung. If I faced by these patterns, I consider it a cystic and start to classify them according to the mapping which I will show in the next slide. This map to the reach for the final diagnosis. At least in these slides, you can discriminate that is a cyst, that is a cyst, that is a cyst, that is a cyst that is a cyst. The, all these are cystic patterns of the lung and we start to uh, uh, to uh, discriminate uh, everyone according to the distributions for example in this case of honeycombing which uh, are distributed subpolarly and in the rows and also by the imperceptible or, or central dot sign as this centrolar emphysema as we see here the central dot sign of the central arterioles and also uh, this one if there are cysts or cavity with nodule, so the discriminating of the linker hand cellulocytosis, for example, or a bearing bizarre shape like this, which are distorted cystis, also is discriminating for linker hand cellulocytosis. However, if the cystis are diffusely, uniformly distributed all over the lung field is, uh, uh, and in female patient in a uh, uh, reductive period is representing lamb or lymphangiomatosis. First question, when I presented with cyst in the lung, I should discriminate it from the cavity as this cavity in the septic emboli patient which are distributed peripheral in the lung. The cavity have a wall which have greater than 4 mm in diameter. However, the cyst have a wall less than 4 mm. So I talking about this half of the slide. This cyst, my presentation is talking to you about the cyst, not in the cavity. The cavity, if there are more than 40 millimeters, I consider it a cavity and I don't make this map for it or this, this differential diagnosis uh, uh, diagram. Uh, and uh, if there are a cavity which have a wall more than 4 millimeters, this is the differential diagnosis which is differs from the differential diagnosis of cystis, which have three groups previously. However, here the differential diagnosis coming from these mnemonic words is cavities, C from cancer, primary or secondary, A from autoimmune like rheumatoid or Wigner granulomatosis, V from vascular septic emboli, and I from infection or pneumonia or abscess, and T from TB, sarcoidosis, silicosis, and the and cellulocytosis also can cause cavities. Now, the questionnaire mapping for the final diagnosis of the cystic lung disease. The first question if I presented with the cystic pattern of the lung, I should discriminate from the cavity by the wool thickness. If the wool is less than 4 millimeters, I consider it cyst. Then the second question, I look for the uh, others group, which are three, bronchiectasis, centrolar emphysema, uh, or honeycombing. So I will check first if there are communication with the bronchial tree, so I consider it as a bronchiectasis. If there are imperceptible wool or central dot signs, I consider it emphysema. And if there are subpleural distributions with parallel rows, so I consider it time coming. Now I excluding the three pathology or three differential diagnoses from the cystic patterns, the bronchiectasis, centrolar emphysema, and the honeycombing from the distribution, from the central dot signs, or from the communication with the bronchial tree. Second, I will check the other 
parenchyma in both sides if there are ground glass opacity or not. Because if there are ground glass opacity, this is one from the real situation. And uh, I look at the uh, or look for smoking for the history of that patient uh, through the previous films or through the history uh, through discriminate uh, uh, this cognitive interstitial pneumonia or DIP. If there are any immune conditions uh, uh, like HIV, so BGP is considered in differential diagnosis. If there are any autoimmune disease like Jugerin syndromes and the cysts are countable, so lymphoid interstitial pneumonia now is the uh, uh, diagnosis. So I discriminating the discommative interstitial pneumonia, the Eurovitsi pneumonia, pneumocystic Eurovitsi pneumonia, and lipoid interstitial pneumonia from the presence of the ground glass opacity according to the history of the patient. Now I discriminating six from the 10 causes of the cystic lung disease and the remaining now the diseases which can cause the cyst and they can remember disease by the pneumonic word link from lymphangiolimatosis, eosinophilic granuloma or Langerhans leucocytosis, neurofibromatosis, tuberous sclerosis, as a phacomatosis, NT are uh, discriminating from the history of phacomatosis and the LE are discriminating from the history of the patient. So I need another concomitant finding or data from the patient as a smoking which occurring more with the longer hand cellulocytosis. Reproductive age females is occurring more with the lymphangiolimatosis, bizarre shaped cystis, and the nodules and cavities occurring with longer hand cellulocytosis, subcutaneous nodules occurring with the neurofibromatosis. So this is a questionnaire map to do reach for the final diagnosis from the 10 causes of the cystic pattern lung or cystic status lung. Now we are facing another. Now presence of ground glass opacity with cystic lung. If it is present, so it re representing the Corazzi 3, 4 or 5. However, if there are no ground glass opacity with cystic lung, so I consider it as a Corazzi 1 or Corazzi 2. Corazzi meaning COVID-19, the reporting and data system, and this system for possibility of COVID-19. Uh, after I uh, confirm that there are ground glass opacity, uh, I look at the distributions or the locations of that ground glass opacity. If it is only central or perihilar, it considers a Corazzi 3. If it in both perihilar and the the uh, subpillurar, so I look where is the predominance. If the predominance is uh, central more than peripheral, so I consider it Corazzi 4. However, if the uh, concentrations of the ground glass opacity is subpillurar more than perihilar, so it considers the Corazzi 5. Now, if the ground glass opacity is only subpillural uh, and unilateral, it considers the Corazzi 4. However, if it is only subpillural and bilateral, it considers the Corazzi 5. And this is the uh, 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 the scheme for the uh, classifications of the Corads from uh, 3 to 5. 3 meaning unsure or indeterminate COVID-19. 4 meaning high uh, possibility of COVID-19. 5 very high possibility of COVID-19. Now, if there are no ground glass opacity, I consider it Corazzi 1 or Corazzi 2. So now I look for another issue on the film. If there are nodules associated with cystic, don't forget we're talking about the cystic lung uh, and there are association. If there are associations for the cystic lung nodules, the in butt cavity or lobar consolidation, so it considers as a Corazzi 2. However, if there are no uh, uh, these uh, issues, so I consider it Corazzi 1, like lymphadenopathy or pleural refusions or uh, lung fibrosis, lung masses, sarcoidosis, all these are considered as a Corazzi 1. And this is the diagrams to facilitate the possibility of COVID-19 with cystic lung disease. And now let's practice. That is all things about, i talking about all things about the cystic lung patterns, uh, differential diagnosis. I hope I provide you with clear knowledge about that. And uh, now I want to finish up today's lessons with these few cases. I have already five, eight cases uh, that seems to challenge these rules a little. So let's start with the first case. First case presented with uh, this pattern of the lung. This is two different patients. 
if I present it with this pattern, so I call this that pattern as a cystic lung. Cystic lung patterns I should uh, first uh, this uh, uh, excluding the communications of the cyst with the as a map is excluding the uh, communications with the bronchial tree. If I exclude it from the bronchial tree, I excluding the bronchiectus. However, these cysts are communicating with the bronchial tree, as we see here, and also here there are some communications with the bronchial tree. So I consider it as a cystic bronchiectus. And the first questions also, according to the maps, look at the wool. If the wool is uh, uh, thin like this, less than four millimeters, I consider it as a cyst, not a cavity. Consider it as a cystic lung pattern, as not a cavity, and with these communications, the diagnosis of cystic bronchitis is very easy. And also, due to these consolidations and nodules, uh, are as an associated finding with the cystic lung, it considers as correct the two I excluding uh, uh, correct three, four, five because there are no ground glass opacity, so it is correct one or two. However, presence of these nodules. Uh, uh, making it or upgrading it to go red Z2, which is meaning low possibility of COVID-19 infection. Second case, and don't forget the map, ask first for if this cyst or cavity through the wool. If you look, there are no wools or imperceptible wool, and this is a uh, coronary format for another patient, uh, which is showing also imperceptible wool or no wool. So the wool is less than four millimeter or no wool, so it is cystic pattern. Cystic pattern, there are three groups, and there are map for uh, questionnaire mapping. The questionnaire mapping here is uh, no communications with the bronchial tree, so this is not uh, bronchial. The second question is there are any imperceptible or, or central dot sign. If you look uh, uh, carefully for that, uh, uh, that cyst, for example, you can see the uh, central dot sign of the central arterioles. And also there are here central dot sign. There are central dot sign also here and there. So there are central dot sign. There are imperceptible wool. And this is enough for the diagnosis of the central emphysema. And in that patient, there are another helping findings in the film as that paraseptal emphysema, which also confirm the diagnosis of emphysema in that patient. So the diagnosis here is uh, central emphysema due to this imperceptible and central dot sign. If I want to classify them as the curads, there are only central rubular nodules, central rubular cystis, and there are no nodules, no tree in bud, no cavitations, no ground glass opacity, so it is easy to diagnose it as a curads one, which is meaning unlikely, highly unlikely to diagnose of COVID-19 in that patient. The third Yes, and the, all those uh, look at the map. Uh, uh, there are pattern of cystic uh, changes in the lung or cystic status in the lung. And if we look at the cystis, uh, all the cystis have wool less than four millimeter. Uh, the first question and second question, you should exclude the communications of these cystis with the bronchial tree. It is not communicating. Some of them communicating here. I can consider this as a traction bronchiectasis. Also here, I can consider this as a traction bronchiectasis. However, the main pathology uh, are uh, distributed in the subpleural distribution. And this wool uh, is relatively thick in not imperceptible wool. So I exclude the emphysema also and exclude bronchiectasis. There are traction bronchiectasis at the center. However, in the peripheral, there are rows, barrier rows, and attach the pleural surface. And this this is enough to diagnose the honeycombing, and this patient have a honeycombing like this honeycomb image, and honeycombing meaning uh, end stage fibrosis in this patient of usual interstitial pneumonia. If I wanted to classify this as a COVID-19 possibility for that patient, there are no ground glass opacity, so it is one or two. There are no nodules, no tree in bud, no consolidation, so I consider it as a Corrads one, which is meaning non-infectious disease of the lung and uh, highly unlikely to be COVID-19. Third case, I presented with uh, uh, axial image from the uh, CT, and there are multiple cysts, and also there are ground glass opacity. So here, the, uh, I, I jump here to these questions. If there are ground glass opacity, I will uh, uh, starting from that question, question three. Ground glass opacity in that patient associated with cysts. So cysts and the ground glass opacity, 
and the wool. Uh, the first question is less than 4 millimeters for the cystis, so it considers cystis, not cavity. Cystis with ground glass opacity, so I will look for one from the rare situations like DIB, like BGB, like LIB, according to the patient history, if there are smoking HIV or Jacquard disease, and this patient have a smoker history and uh, 52 years old. And uh, if I look at for the previous study <coughs> for comparison, or uh, I enough uh, uh, satisfied by this history to diagnose a discomet of interstitial pneumonia in the ordinary situations. However, in nowadays, because this ground glass opacity, I, I will uh, uh, satisfy the diagnosis of COVID-19 or rule out it. And I will make the map. I return to the map of ground glass opacity. Ground glass opacity in the film meaning correct the three, four, or five. And according to the distribution here, the distribution is subpolar distribution and bilateral. However, there are underlying lung disease, the presence of underlying lung disease, which is cystic lung disease, uh, downgrading the uh, the correct from 5 to 4 so this is the correct for which meaning very high possibility to be COVID-19 and you need to do the RT-PCR test to confirm or rule out the diagnosis if there are no cystic lesions with these patterns I consider it as a correct 5 very high possibility however due to underlying lung disease bilateral subpolar ground glass opacity are considered as a correct 4 only <clears throat> and in ordinary situations, this patient actually a uh, patient of this cognitive interstitial pneumonia. Uh, so uh, the, in ordinary cases, diagnosed as interstitial, this cognitive interstitial pneumonia due to presence of ground glass with cystis and history of smoking. <clears throat> Another case of this, how can I know this is assessed? Because the wool is less than 4 mm. Uh, is there any ground glass opacity? Yes, there are ground glass opacity, bilateral, subpolar, and central distribution. Okay, ground glass and plural. So I need another question. Uh, ground glass and cystis. So I need another question to diagnose the patient if there are history of smoking to diagnose it as a DIB or HIV history to diagnose it as a BGB or uh, autoimmune disease like sugar and disease to diagnose it as a LIB and if the patient have a history of HIV so now the facilitates the diagnosis as a pneumocystic uh, urovitsi pneumonia uh, or pneumocystic cranial pneumonia as old name this is a new name uh, BGB uh, now is diagnosed however Nowadays, also due to presence of this ground glass opacity, you should consider the Coretz as a Coretz for very high possibility of COVID-19 if the patient is complaining from fever, which uh, shortens of breath or like this, and they need to do the test to confirm the diagnosis or rule out it. And this uh, actually patient of HIV and they have pneumocystic uh, urivitz pneumonia and diagnosed as it. However, only I make it as a Coretz to uh, to be uh, more updated. Another case of the cystis because the wool is less than 4 mm and associated with small area of ground glass opacity and consolidation. Presence of consolidation here uh, making the, uh, uh, the diagnosis uh, is cyst with ground glass opacity. However, if you can count these cystis, yes, you can count the cystis and uh, you need only any history of autoimmune disease like sugar and disease in that patient or 51 year old woman and uh, association, these associations in making the diagnosis of lipoid interstitial pneumonia or lymphoid interstitial pneumonia lipoid interstitial pneumonia is uh, highly uh, suggestive and uh, lipoid interstitial pneumonia diagnosed for that patient. If I need to make correct for that patient due to presence of this small consolidation, I make correct too because uh, consolidations upgrading the correct uh, tree in bud Centrioban reduces cavitations, all these can upgrading the Coretz 2 2. And is this meaning low possibility of COVID 19, low possibility of COVID 19, uh, and uh, presence of cystis and uh, consolidation or ground glass opacity, uh, helping for the differential diagnosis of the lipoid interstitial pneumonia? Case 7. Another uh, a little bit, two cases more, and uh, this case uh, showing multiple uh, 
cystis, uh, which are uniform in size and distributed all over both lung fields, and its wool is less than four millimeters, so I consider it as a cyst. So these uh, uh, patterns of distributions of the cystis are, are reasonable diagnosis for the uh, uh, lymphangiolimatosis, uh, act, uh, particularly if the patient is a reproductive age uh, female. And also, this is if you follow the map, this cyst is not communicating with the bronchial tree and not have imperceptible wool to diagnose emphysema and also not subpleural distributions uh, to the diagnose honeycombing. There are no ground glass opacity so the, to diagnose the rare situation. So I jumping to question four, which is a disease with the cystic lung, which is uh, remembered by the, by the word lint. And here, the uh, lymphangiolimatosis is the uh, best diagnosis for that situations. And due to no presence of grand grass opacity, if I need to make uh, corrads, corrads one or two, however, there are also no uh, nodules or cavitation, so it is corrads one, which meaning highly unlikely uh, uh, COVID-19, and uh, highly unlikely COVID-19 because it is non-infectious disease. The last case, uh, bizarre shape cystis, and this cystis uh, uh, also, this case have a cystis and also a little bit uh, thick wool here uh, can be considered as a cavity and the nodules. This is actually our two different patients and the presence of these bizarre shape cystis are diagnostic for Langerhans cystitis particularly if there are any history of smoking for that patient. If you try to communicate these cysts with a bronchial tree, it does not communicate. And if you look at the cystis, it is not imperceptible wool and is not uh, subpleural uh, distributions in barrel rows. So uh, you can easily uh, exclude the first group, the others. And the rare groups, the other three, are uh, also excluding by absence of the ground glass opacity. So now you're dealing with the length and the bizarre shape, smoking history, presence of cavities, presence of nodules, or these features facilitating the diagnosis of Langerhans cellulocytosis rather than lymphoid, uh, rather than lymphangiolimatosis. And if I wanted to classify it as a Corrads, it is Corrads 2, only because the presence of these nodules, which upgrading it from 1 to 2, and uh, uh, and this is also meaning a low possibility of COVID-19 diagnosis. This is a case of Langerhans cellulocytosis. Well, I hope this uh, lesson has uh, helped to uh, make a few things clearer for you. Uh, if you feel satisfied with uh, these lessons or this video, so don't forget to subscribe, like, and share it. Uh, if to uh, receive any new videos like this in the near future, and don't uh, forget the Wednesday learning MRI and the Sunday rapid review anatomy and Friday Arabic presentations. Have a nice day and.